All right. This is Quota, a.k.a. Jeff, with Hex to Hex. Thought we might do a what's on the table and what's on the shelf video. Now, of course, my shelves aren't as numerous as others that I see. Um, and my range is probably not as vast as others. I'm, I'm not into the fantasy or much of the sci-fi stuff. Uh, I'm pretty much American Civil War, Napoleon, World War II. I'm starting to throw World War I into the mix. And I mean, I have some other, other eras, games, that uh, uh, I like or just happen to have picked up along the way. Um, let's talk about what's on the table, what I'm getting ready to start playing now. So I picked up most of, you know, granted, I don't think they're a series, but there's a bunch of them from GMT that have a name and a year on them. And uh, I believe France 40 is the earliest of the ones that I have. So I have that on the table. And uh, I'm going to start that. Got my charts popped up there. Got all the pieces laid out. We're going to play the sickle cut scenario. Uh, this game has two scenarios. Dynamo and sickle cut. Um, and this is a Mark Semenich design. And it's a GMT 2013. So all the blue troopies there are the, are the French. Uh, some of that green stuff up there is Belgian. You got some Brits on the board. There's a British headquarters there. And green... Reinforcements. I haven't got to this yet, but it seems interesting that all the reinforcements are, you put them in a cup. So I got to assume this is going to be a draw type thing. And then you have some turn track reinforcements. Like I said, I have not read the rules to this yet. I hope to get through them sometime this week, or maybe by this weekend and get after this. Uh, they have remnant units. Uh, I don't know what those are yet, but I'm having to guess that those are when, if there are step losses taken, uh, those get applied or those get used. Informational markers. It looks like supply, out of supply, uh, who controls what. Uh, disordered or disorganized or disrupted. Yeah. Some other counters. I don't know what they're for yet. But uh, I have to say that this would be, I want to say May 12th when, was it Guderian? Uh, I think it was Guderian. Yeah, good area. Okay, yeah. Where he broke out there near Sedan and just completely surprised the French. And next thing you know, they were off and running to the coast. And I think it was somewhere along there, wasn't it twice that Hitler wanted them to stop, which is amazing considering Hitler always wanted them to push forward when he was on the East Front. Uh, the one time they did not listen to him, and I guess they kept going, and then the other time they did. Um, and I think it was Hitler said, no, we're not going to just destroy everything at Dunkirk. And they got away, so... All right, but this is set up, uh, and uh, probably get after that at first chance. This, this, I, I got to find this one once. Once I get going with this, it'll be a smooth play, from what I gathered or watched on YouTube or read about. These things play pretty decent. Although I haven't heard much about this one. Um, I don't know. Maybe it's because it's the oldest one. It was 2013. Another GMT games. Boy, they got a lot of these that are good. Of course, we just finished the Dark Valley, and that was just outstanding. So, yeah, so we'll be looking at France, uh, 1940 or France 40. All right, the one that I'm probably going to get after first, I'm already deep into the rule book, is uh, uh, Stonewall Jackson's Way. Now, I've got all but the, was it On to Richmond? But I think it's the last one in the Avalon Hill series. Um, well, you can't find that one cheap. But the... Uh, Picked up one or two of these from my buddy Osprey, who you can see on Board Game Geek. He has his whole list of games in there. He sells a bunch of stuff on there. Um, I punched, or clipped all these, punched them out, clipped them all. I've got the Cedar Creek scenario set up. Um, we'll start with that one first. See all the Confederates. Now, these maps are just beautiful. And these are the Avalon Hill maps. Uh, the MMP maps are just flat out gorgeous too. And I'm going to work on building this complete collection. Um, I may have to bypass the uh, On to Richmond or whatever that one's called. But uh, just recently I played the, uh, or me, this is the Cedar Mountain scenario, I believe. Yeah. And we just played uh, GMT's, the Great Battles of the American Civil War, the Richard Berg. We just played the tactical regimental level version of that just recently. You can see that in my video list. So, uh, yeah, we're going we're gonna to get this one started. I can't wait to get into this system. It's funny because I've never been big on these 
on an operational level, maybe close to strategic level of Civil War games. I've always liked the, you know, the give me the regiment level stuff. That's what I like. But just gorgeous map. Eh, a little off color from one to the other, but uh, eh, no complaints. Looks beautiful. And of course, behind me here on small table, like I said, I've got one of the maps. Now, I said I think I'm about moving this game here, the Great War in Europe, over to the big table, which I, I think that's what I'm, I think that's just going to stay like it is for now. What I was attempting to do was set up just the east front and try to play it. But I noticed there's nothing in the rules about how to just play one of them. It's kind of set up for it to play the whole thing. So what I did was, the thing I had to overcome was, uh, obviously, Russian units, reinforcements coming in Russia. So, but it was the Germans, because the other map connects, showing the west front, and your German reinforcements come in, and you as the player running the Germans, I guess, decide which way they go. So, I will say this, <laughs> another Ted Racer game, and the accountability or the accuracy of the units is right on so far. I found a on a Google that's called 251 Infantry Divisions, I think. I think it was a book, uh, but it's all in numerical order, and you can go right down this thing, and it tells you when the unit was formed, where it was trained, where what front it went to when it left that front, if it moved to the other front or another front. So I've been going through that, and you can see that these stacks over here of the, on the Germans are the ones that went to the east front. Um, some of them got pulled out and went to the west front. But if they initially went to the east front, I'm putting them in here in the uh, reinforcement track. Uh, I, I still got the rest of these to figure out right here. Um, that's not too bad considering all that I've done already. But I think, like I said, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to end up moving the full game over to the big board next. It, it might just sit here. So, But I'm really looking forward to it, especially after playing Dark Valley. If uh, that was a 2013 game, this one here is before that. And uh, I can't wait to see what Ted's done with this game. The rule booklet looks a little more intimidating, but so far, anything Ted Racer I've looked at looks wonderful. Um, all right, let's take a look at the shelf. Uh, you'll be able to tell right away what I'm fond of the most. So, down here at the bottom, these are some games that I had. The map slander on top, or the original SPI Bach Dumb Rhine, and I have the game in the box somewhere. There's Terrible Swift Sword SPI. I got some Napoleonic games um, that are all awesome. There's another game. I just punched this the other night, or clipped the corners of the Edelweiss. Uh, Clash of Arms. I'm going to play that. I, I got that a long time ago. I don't know where I got it from. might have been in a in a pawn shop or a, one of those uh, knick-knack shops or whatever. But I'm going to play that. Operation Typhoon. There's the SPI version. I also have the GMT version up here called Typhoon that uh, is ready to go. Bloody April. Got that from a gentleman in, in Canada. And it was unpunched and everything. And I was just tickled to get that game. All right, there's uh, three of my Avalon Hill great campaigns in the American Civil War. Like I say, the only one I'm missing from that group is the On to Richmond one. Ah, the, that Patriot box over there, whatever it is, that's just our, I'm not sure what that game was called, Price of Freedom or something like that. That's just where I have extra counter stored. <clears throat> I do have two copies of Victory Games' American Civil War and Paratroops. Uh, you saw my videos playing that. There's the uh, Glory. Yeah, get this right here. Now where are you at? All right, there's the Glory series. Good games. I played Bull Run. I played Chickamauga. I'm going to get those on the table again, too. Now, the ones right beside that there, the game on the left is the... What is this called? This is called Eurofront, the one in the middle. I picked that up in a store because it was the only war game they had, and it's one of them stores where they sell mostly D&D &D and Magic the Gathering. And I don't realize, or I don't think they realized what they had. I think I paid $29 for that. What that game does allows you to merge the other two, East Front and West Front, which I got those on eBay, and I think one of them I paid like 100 bucks for. But they were in shrink wrap, and they're block games. The only block game I own, but I am really interested in trying that. So eventually I'll get around to those. Napoleonic Wars, my buddy, Osprey, uh... He invited me down, a group of players, and it took us a month of Saturdays to play it. 
And then he turned around and gave me my own copy of that game with updated cards and maps. That's awesome. And I'm telling you, that's a point-to-point -point game. Never owned one. Never played one. Didn't like them. Swore I'd never get one. Well, let me tell you something. I loved that game. It was very, very good. Uh, the white boxes here, some might be empty. Some got some uh, old SPI or TSR stuff in them. I got to label them. And, of course, there's the rest of the uh, the GMT ones. And like I said, they're, I guess they're not really a series, but when I look at them like that, that makes me think they are a series. Stop, and I'm going to tell you something. A couple of these games are huge, the stuff that's in them. Uh, Arden's 44, I got that a long, long time ago. never played it. Got it on the table once, tried to set it up, never played it. But I watched somebody playing it, and I like the 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 sequence of play and how the game plays. So I'm looking forward to getting that on the table too. But I thought I'd start with something in the earliest year. So 1940 was where I began. All right, there's some old SPI stuff there. The, now, most of these are ones that I've had since, geez, 70s, 80s, back when I was in the service. And uh, yeah, the, the the old flat packs they were in, just <laughs> they didn't make it. So And some of them were magazine games, and I, so I put them in the boxes here. And by the way, these boxes here, uh, now I've got some of the GMT boxes, which are great. I think Lock and Load makes one called the... The locker or something like that they're great a little expensive these white boxes i got i got them from uline they're a little thin but they're just rigid enough to and they're the, pretty much the same size as all the other game boxes and i think i got like 20 or 24 of them and i don't think i played 30 bucks for the whole big box and it says and also from uline if you're looking for a table that's great for monster game sizes. Now, they aren't ex super expensive, but they make those shipping and packing tables for businesses. Well, they sell the replacement tabletops. And I was looking for a particular size, uh, 36 wide by 5 foot in length, and I needed two of them. Well, by golly, they had them because it fit the plexiglass that I got, which that junk, that stuff's not expensive to buy, but if you're going to ship it, have it shipped yet that it, oh my lord the shipping was twice what the price of the two pieces of plexiglass were so but it's worth it it's all here now i've got a table where i can set up pretty much all the monster games i got except for one and that's uh this hallowed ground from uh the regimental subseries mmp but i'll figure that one out eventually but yeah that's uh those two those are heavy don't gosh i thought i was gonna have a hernia trying to put these things up here by myself so but, but it's been it's worth it they're here now i right, back over to the shelf uh yeah i got two copies of the gleam of bayonets one's my original one and one i found somewhere in a thrift store um terrible so sword tsr that was the that was the last one to my great battles of the american civil war collection that i did not have and i needed uh i have the original terrible Swift sword and i used to have this one at one time but i think i sold it um, but I wanted it and I went ahead and got it, got a pretty good deal on it. I got a lot of stuff from Noble Knight. Another Napoleon's Last Battles. Uh, this is the TSR version. The one down at the bottom in the white boxes, big white boxes is the SPI version. Uh, Rebel Sabres, got that one. Uh, Wellington's Victory. And I also have the SPI flat pack version of that. I had two of those. I sold one. Somebody was not too long ago. Somebody loved it. Then I have Summer Storm, Rick Barber's game. I'm going to tell you, that game is awesome that is a very very good representation of gettysburg or and if you want to play a campaign campaign building into it it has a system for that i didn't quite get to do that but i read a lot about it and and I'm to, the game is plays a little slow but he has worked out all the details really really well and we got to put some of my spi games into boxes there merged a bunch of them together uh, that's all civil war there it's some of the first games the old spi ones you know, Cedar Mountain, Drive on Washington, Pea Ridge, Wilson's Creek, and Stonewall, the original. The first one. Um, well, after Terrible Swift Sword. Some other Alan Hill games, Veracruz, and then, of course, a little round top, and SPI in there, which was Veracruz. And uh, you got the Kaiser's Battle around here somewhere, too. All right, there's my playable copy of Victory Games of the Civil War. Lee versus Grant, very good game. Uh, that plays a lot like the uh, Avalon Hill Great Campaigns games. Uh, similar type thing. NATO, the next war, um, a smaller version of 
Operation Mark Garden, Hell's Highway, Victory Games. These are these are all games. The NATO Next War in Europe is a great game too. Along with SPI has the the three was it the Central Front series? Those those are I have I have two of those two of the three of those. They're very good. All right, five Aprils. You want a quick playing brigade level Civil War game has like four or five battles in it. That's a good one. Simple play. Sniper. That's just a box with uh, extra pieces in it. And there's my another box I added with. Uh, Pleasant Hill, the Horse Soldiers, and Baton Rouge. Um, don't think I'll play Baton Rouge. Uh, I don't know. Maybe one day I'll get around to it, I'm sure. All right, let's take a look at these here. Oh, um, Von Manstein's back in, but that's another one that I want to play. I watched somebody playing that online. Really good game. Um, at any cost, Mets. Uh, <laughs> I didn't think I'd ever want something like that, but I saw somebody playing it. I think it was the Players Aid. I think it was Grant and Alexander. And... Uh, I said, man, that's a good-looking game. Let's add that to the collection. So I picked it up. All right, so the Barbarossas and Typhoon. Um, I'm missing North and Center, but I have P500 on the uh, reprints for the second editions of those for uh, North and South or Center. And then, of course, I got the other ones here from my buddy. Dark Valley, so I'll just finish playing that. Unconditional Surrender, that's another one I'm looking forward to. And then I think when I have all my tables clear, I'm going to break out 1914. Because I hear that's really, 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 really detailed. All right, hiding in the corner over here. Got the uh, Decisions Games remake of SPI's Vakdom Ryan. Onslaught, there's a good little quick playing game. Uh, there's Gettysburg, what's it called? Gettysburg 77, I guess. Avalon Hill, where you have three versions of the game in it. I want to play the advanced, I haven't gotten that far yet. Um, Panzer Leader, Squad Leader stuff. Problem is, most of those boxes are incomplete. Uh, Squally, I don't even think I have the counters to it. I'm not even sure where I got that from. It might have been in a box from somebody. And then uh, Struggle of Nations. It, that's an interesting looking game. Uh, I don't know. I may eventually get into that one. Or not. I don't know if that one's my speed or not. And just my junk. Extra storage box. Oh yeah, these little plastic ones right here. These things here. I got them from Walmart. They're about four or five bucks. But these things fit inside these MMP boxes, the small boxes, just perfect. And it's well worth the price. And I, I've probably got a dozen of them in these games already. And they'll hold just about everything. Of course, I merge all my mass games. I merge all the informational counters into these trays up here, which are also from Walmart. I think they're about six bucks too. But uh, I've got the Great Battles of the American Civil War in there. Um, Barbarossa has one. My MMP Civil War Brigade series is in one. And I got another one up there. I can't remember what it is. All right, top shelf. Here we go. All right. And there's the Napoleonic Brigade series. That's the four not print and play ones. Two of them are still in shrink wrap. And I'm looking forward to playing those. All right, then, then you start to see my some of my great battles of American Civil War. So the three games right there... Uh, the Guns of Cedar Creek, First Blood, and the original Dead of Winter, when Richard Berg was with Simulations Design. And I think they changed their name after one or two games. to It's all the same, but they, they changed the way it's written out. Right, and then there's the Regimental Sub-Series. This Hallowed Ground, Terrible Swift, Terrible Swift, what is me? This Terrible Sound, and a Fearful Slaughter. And then South Mountain. Um which that was in shrink wrap. I'd like to say I busted up and to punch it. All right. The only multi-man brigade series, Civil War brigade series game I had from a long time ago was the first one in their quiet fields. The first version of the that Antietam game. I've got the second one. I can see my little checklist here when I started to get all this stuff. I made sure I, I went down my checklist, wrote all these games down in these series and then checked them off as I got them. Uh, the last one I got for the Civil War brigade series was, uh, uh, the second version of Thunder to Crossroads. I finally found somebody had one and I got it. And then I've got the whole collection. Played a few of them. Um, I haven't videoed any of them because I didn't start doing that until after I was done playing. I think I played the first Thunder to Crossroads. I played In Their Quiet Fields. And I, th I think I played one more. And eh, maybe not. And of course, the last one is Strike Them a Blow. And I'm going to play all of those. Yeah. All right, so that's pretty much the games I have now for the, the coup de gras. Let me pull them off the shelf here. Let me get them off here so you can see them. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's coming. Now, all of these games are in shrink wrap, and I just freaking love it. And they're they're so <laughs> these games are like I guess these are the this is it. These are the games of the Civil War that every time I hear somebody talking about, you know, you I would have thought Terrible Sword was it. It's just the granddaddy. But these three games right here from Multi Man, that is it right there. Now to take Washington, I think you I think you can still buy that from MMP. I'm not sure because I think that's how I got mine. I can't remember. None but heroes. That took a while for me to find one. I think I ended up paying a hundred dollars for that. And then the monster over there, last chance for victory. And like I say, all three are shrink wrapped. I think the average price I've been seeing for that has been about three eighty nine to four hundred. Uh, some of them are used. Uh, my buddy Osprey, he sold me that one. He had one left, and I got it for three hundred bucks. And uh, I appreciate the daylights out of him. And I'm so scared to open, take the plastic off them, but I'm sure eventually I will because I'm going to need to get them punched. And I think what it is right now, I'm not on my Gettysburg kick. I live real close to Gettysburg, so I'm up there twice a year at least. But uh, yeah, I'm eventually going to get to playing these. I'm looking forward to it. But I think I've, 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 I don't want to say mastered, but I've got the Civil War Brigade series down. I think I want to do some of the RSS stuff. Uh, I know that this was sort of the rewrite of that to make the, the system a lot simpler, but I fell in love with this order system stuff in starting with the Civil War Brigade series. That just makes the fog of war so awesome in these games to, you write an order for a unit because you see something going on and then that commander accepts that order and he starts to execute and turns out the objective or the enemy that you sent him after, they changed their orders and got accepted immediately and are moving in a different direction. You still have to fulfill your orders until you either get a new one and accept it or you complete the one you were given or you take a chance and try to roll for a, a was it a divisional goal i think and or roll the brigade out of it to give them their own order or something like that and i think that's great it's cool to have to roll the dice and find out that the commander said nah i don't like this order and throws it out or it never got to him or, yeah, okay, I'll do it, but it's going to be about two hours before I do it. I think that is so awesome. That really can, can just makes what happens in the games can be so random, which you got to think it was probably like that anyhow during the Civil War and other wars. Uh, let's see, last but not least, my uh, current Great Battles of America Civil War. Uh, I've got all those. I don't have the second version of Three Days of Gettysburg, but I think... I think the second version isn't included inside the third edition, which I, that was the last one of those I got. So, and I've got all those. My buddy, again, Osprey, he helped me out with the Gringo series, uh, with the uh, uh, add-ons, which are in the plastic bags here. And a couple of Revolution games, which I will play. I'll get into those. All right, well, there you have it. What's on the, uh, what's on the shelf and what's on the table? I'll do some, uh, try to do some what's on the tables here so that I can keep you up to date with what I'm getting ready to play. That way, you know, and if you've seen something on the shelf there that you'd, you'd like to see a playthrough or a review or just how it looks set up, hey, post a comment. I'll see what I can't do. All right. Good talking to everybody. See you later.